Hello everyone. I'm on my next lesson um, for you during the um, lockdown time all over the world. Um, and today's lesson, I'm just going to spend a bit of time about how successful people are successful. And sometimes, even if you go to a neighborhood, you will see two houses next to each other. They're doing very much the same jobs. One individual is incredibly successful and the other individual is struggling to achieve the same success. Think about in a class, you know, when we were at school and university, you know, there are individuals right next to each other, same teacher, same environment, but they deliver different results. And this has always really bugged me. And I said, why is it? Why this is happening? And this is to do with some of the ideas that we are going to share today. Because our traditional education system has taught us to work with our senses. And our senses are, which I have many times sort of spoken in the past, and in my book, I talk about to see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. Those are the sensory factors. Those are the factors that we are operating out of this world. But that's not enough. We need to understand there must be something else out there for us to be able to achieve what we need to achieve. And that something else is what I'm going to talk about today. In order to do that, what we first need to understand is we need to understand ourselves. This is an incredibly complex computer. This human body is incredibly complex. And if you don't understand that, it's incredibly difficult for us to do anything sensibly. Think about it, you know, I'm just recording this on my iPhone. It is incredibly powerful. That iPhone has got so many other functionalities. And if I don't know how to use that iPhone, I can't use it. I can't get a lot out of it. In fact, a simple example is when I got this new iPhone, I wanted to switch off and I, I didn't realize you need to press two buttons to switch off and I was trying to push it like I was doing on my previous iPhone because the user manual has changed. And if I don't know the user manual, I can't even switch off my iPhone and that iPhone will have very limited choice. That's exactly correct for us as individuals, as humans. We need to understand who we are. We need to understand what's happening. Then we can influence what happens outside. And that's what we talk about um, in thinking into character and in, in Regent College London, where we are about to embark on our private university um, um, journey. And all of that, it comes to the fundamentals of knowing and doing. Okay, let's get to what's this all about. So first, we need to understand who we are. There's a, there's a diagram there, and I'm just gonna sort of draw the diagram here as well. And so effectively, if, if, if this is all of us, there is a conscious mind, and there is a subconscious mind, and that's the body. And this one works in an orderly manner in, in the environment, in the nature. The conscious mind has, as I had told you before, have sensory factors. Those sensory factors will enable us to live in the, in the world and then it enable us to see, hear, smell, taste and touch. But there is more to it. Within this conscious mind, we also have something called intellectual factors. And I'm just going to talk about that in here so that and, and, and i'm talking about that in my book and, and if you can look at the book and if you can go to um our uh, platform you can get an ebook and i'm just going to talk about those and, and i think it's quite useful for us to understand so those factors are perception will imagination memory reason and intuition so these tools are also sitting here and we are not necessarily using those tools by using those tools, for example, memory, we can concentrate on one aspect. Reason is our ability to think. There is inductive reason and deductive reason. And we need to understand this 
and we'll have to develop those things in our conscious mind. And once we have had the information, and this is what the current education system is doing, we're learning everything onto our conscious mind, but we kind of not doing anything with that. The trick is this, the trick is very simple. Once you have those ideas, let's say you have an idea to create a business and you bring that into your conscious mind, you just need to bring this down to your subconscious mind. How do you do that? That's what you give energy to it. That's what you give emotions to it. And that's what the educational system calls about emotional intelligence versus IQ, the IQ versus EQ. There are a lot of abstracts going on, but how do you do that is very simple. The problem is, you know, none of us know how the mind works and we don't have a diagram. And I'm saying, this is not the mind. You need a diagram to explain everything. So you'll have to suppress that into your, push that down into your subconscious mind. Once it goes into the subconscious mind, then it's autopilot. This body will act. There's no way you can stop it because action will happen because our subconscious mind is completely deductive. The subconscious mind accepts everything as if it's true. It doesn't know whether it is right or wrong. It can take an imagination and believe that, yes, that's what's happening. And that's how, when we were a baby, we learned the languages. So that when we were born, the whole subconscious mind was wide open and everything around us went into the subconscious mind and we learned the language. We couldn't say, sorry, I'm not learning the language. There are so many habits that we have learned in the last, I mean, for me, 49 years. It's all about on the, what's going into the subconscious mind. So just coming back to the uh, diagram here again. So we are taking action, but the action should be today. You've got to take action today. No point in thinking about it, you know, planning, because the world will be very different tomorrow. When you take that action, there will be a reaction. And the reaction is, as we always say, the reaction comes, action, reaction, what's that? I mean, saying number of times, that's physics, isn't it? Cause and effect, action, reaction, that's physics. And when that reaction comes, that gives you a result. And that result will change your circumstances, that'll change your view of the world, and all the rest of it. And, and this is what, what we need to understand. And once we understand this model, once we understand why this is happening, then we can work around it. And if you don't like the results here, what do we do? It's very simple. We go back and say, okay, maybe the actions I'm taking is not right. And then you go back here and say, maybe I'm entertaining wrong ideas into my subconscious mind. Change this everything changes. That's it, that's very simple. But why can't we do that? Because we can't do that because we are programmed. We have got certain paradigms or habits or whatever you call it. We are programmed to do in a particular way. And we are now trying to change, but we can't change. And even if it changes, the change is sometimes temporary because we go back to our old habits. We think about negative things. We don't think about positive things. And here the other diagram talks about on one hand, you have got ignorance. The other side, you have got knowledge. And the only way to produce the results that you need to produce, you need to improve the knowledge. And the only way you can improve the knowledge if you can study. And study, I'm not talking about the study what you know, we've been studying in the, in, the, in the traditional outside in the education system, whereby you are just studying lots and lots of materials and you're just keeping it here. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the study of how the nature works, the study of yourself. And if you don't, that might use a manual example of my iPhone, which I am recording this live. And it's such a simple phone. It's going to now transmit all over the world. So it's those things that we need to study. We have a physical body, and nobody can deny that. 
and that's where the physical health comes in and that's what we are all grateful for the NHS for the wonderful work they have done but there is more to it right it cannot be just a physical body we have an intellect I and mean, then we we all agree that we have an intellect and we have got intellectual tools like what I said the memory the the intuition, the reasoning, the will and the perception, you know, these are all our intellect. But is that all? There is more to it. There is something within us which keeps us going. But we don't fully understand that. Nobody does, I believe. And it's, it's something, this intangible piece, and people call it in various terminologies. It's something else which drives this, you know, how that, that we can call it a intangible, we can call it a, it hasn't got a form. Some may call it spirit, you know, different terminologies. A science calls one thing, theology calls another thing. And I'm not here to really introduce those and, and, and say whether it's right or wrong. But what I feel is there is, we live in three planes. So we have a physical body, we have an intellect, and then we have something called a spirit or you can call it uh, and that's what keeps us going and then tomorrow if we are not in this world that piece uh, perhaps is not with us and then the body becomes um, no use and but all of these are interlinked these are not separated the body is linked to the intellect and the intellect is linked to uh, the, the, the non-form, uh, which which we can which you call it energy, scientists might call it, or theology will call it, uh, but we can call it anything. But there is something, but that something is not very clear to us, and that's the other problem because we don't not clear about that because we don't know what's going on there. We just get confused, and, and when you confuse, what do you do? You just walk away from it. Think about it. You're looking at something. You're trying to solve the problem. You cannot solve it. You can't understand it. Then what do you do? You just walk away. You try for a while, and you walk away. Don't give up. Just understand why it is. And once we do that, and that's what exactly. And if I go back to my start, what's happening in that um, neighborhood, that one house or the householders are incredibly successful. The next door, same guy doing same business, very similar circumstances. He can't do it. What they're doing is they're not doing this. So both of them might have the knowledge there. But it's so simple. You just need to believe in it. There are some other laws, you know, you've got to, and you shouldn't violate somebody else's uh, space. There's no competition here, ladies and gentlemen. There's no competition. There's only creation. If you work on a competitive field, you are not going to create anything. The, the people that you have created and who achieved so many success in this world, they don't look at other people. They're not even interested in other people. What they are interested in is within themselves because they are creators. They're creating. They're not interested in what the other person is doing. And even if they you know, so-called copy and then create competition. And, and think about it, most of the time when you go to companies, oh, what is your competitor analysis? Why? Why do you need to analyze your competitor? Let the competitor grow, let the competitor do what good things is. You have got enough people out there in the world for you to say, why are you competing? Never compete. And the people who compete will never succeed. And again, these are our habits. I know, you know, I come from a you know, financial background, when we take over a company or in my previous life, the first, oh, have you done your competitor analysis? Now I just think, why do I need to do a competitor analysis? I just need to do an analysis about myself. And once I sort that out, the rest will follow. And in organizations, if you think about it, that's me. There can be lots of other people in there. So the next one could be Tashini, this one could be Alka, the other one could be Paulus, the other one is Caroline, and rest of the team within the region group. We are all, and if we then collectively agree upon a goal, collectively agree upon a vision, and if we can start impressing that on the subconscious mind, it is then a multiplier effect what you are giving out to the nature. And that multiplier effect of actions will create the reaction. So that's how companies, large companies, if you really think about it, very small companies become incredibly large because they were all doing the same thing. They believed in that vision. They believed what was going to happen. And then they had a ground war. And I, and I learned recently 
uh, in Stanford, uh, my professor, Huggy said, you know, growing a company, scaling a business, and if you're managing a company in a crisis, it is a ground war, not an air war. And I, it's, I thought, oh, wow, what a, what a good way to explain that. A ground war is, let's say you have got your 250 people in your company, and that's what the region has at the moment, and I'm pretty sure that's going to go into a large numbers in the next term. Um, few months and years and we all need to go on the on the right rhythm the right space as a ground war and, and progressing towards our goal the air war on the other hand you know we're sitting in the plane and then we are going from let's say from a to b and then if the steps are not necessarily coordinated we're still with a, with a, with a bit of chance we'll get there but that's the air war but i don't think you can run a company you know, when I actually, prior to this C19, and, and I think, you know, some of my actions and leadership very much an hour, you know, I was really say to colleagues and teams, look, you want to get there. But I, I didn't really approach this as a, a ground war. And in the crisis, you know, you know, every adversity gives you an opportunity to study, understand and, and, and do things. And, and this has certainly given me the opportunity to say, nope, the old system didn't serve me, and therefore I'm going to do it in the new system. And um, thank you for uh, listening for this. This is a very, very simple method. I think at Regent College London and Regent Independent College, those are the two brands that we are now operating out of UK. We will be now expanding our services globally because we have a complete ecosystem to offer uh, services from you know, registering a student to all the way to graduation. And we call that service Region Digital. We are going to publish our lessons in YouTube and all of our colleagues are very excited. And, 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 and just to give some humor to the whole project, we also have a hashtag name. So I am going to call myself hashtag Regent.Punkage. Um, and then I'm sure colleagues will can come up with their own names and you know, they can make it fun or and um, I'm a bit boring on that and perhaps I would become a bit of an exciting name uh, but I just thought I'll go as Selva in the, in the physical world uh, and, and on the digital world and I'll probably go as uh, Pankaj which, uh, which I also uh, enjoy people calling me so therefore I'm going to be called hashtag regent dot Pankaj and uh, thank you for listening and we will be having a lot more lessons in the future.